Well, that was easier than the table saw. Okay, so if you don't know what you clicked on or how you ended up here, firstly, welcome. Um, these two boxes contain the parts for the Carbotec 8 inch helical head parallelogram jointer. Uh, so, first things first, I suppose I should get them all unboxed and see what we're working with. So, this model is the Carbotec JNX200C. It's a 1.5 horsepower helical head jointer that's pretty much the same as any of the other parallelogram jointers out there, but this one is painted blue. In this box is the main body and motor of the jointer, as well as these two boxes, the dust collector flange, this bracket that isn't in the manual anywhere, the drive belt and the belt cover. I'll start off by getting the body the right way up. Nice and easy, oh, or not. Everything else is in this packing crate, including all the cast iron pieces and the instruction manual. I'll take a handy little seat here and take a moment to review the manual, although it pretty much just says, assemble the jointer, so I don't really know why I bothered. Anyway, I'll start by attaching the mobility wheel with the one vertical bolt and two horizontal bolts. Once tightened, I appear to have learned my lesson from before as I lower the body down again. And this wheel's a bit sticky, so a heavy dose of WD-40 makes life a bit easier. The infeed table, outfeed table, and cutter head all come in one pre-assembled piece, which is great, but very heavy. And it's made all the more heavy with the bolts that they sneakily attached the whole assembly to the crate with that I wasn't expecting. With a quick game of twister on the floor, those bolts are out the way and I can get into the actual lifting on the jointer body. I would always recommend using an able-bodied friend or neighbour, but I am stubbornly independent and like to make my life difficult. So I'll go through a two-part lift, getting one side part of the way up and supported on my old table saw stand. And after a questionable little shimmy to pull my shorts up, I get everything up and in place. The assembly is then attached into place with the eight hex head screws whilst I pull all manner of faces trying to align the holes. I'll pop the other cover off and start fixing this side before becoming very concerned with something outside apparently. To install the drive belt, I support the motor with a little bottle jack from my car and slip the belt on. I'll then loosen the horizontal and vertical bolts that hold the motor in place before using a straight piece of timber to align the two pulleys. One of the few things the manual did say was that the optimal belt tension is when it deflects one inch in the middle of its travel. A bit of downwards pressure on the motor and the bolts retightened, and it looks like the tension is about where it needs to be. One of the mystery boxes from the body of the jointer contained this pre-wired power switch, which attaches to the top of this post on the infeed table. The cable then goes through this hole in the side of the body and plugs into the motor nice and simply. The dust flange is then attached with these four screws and then I'll put the side panels back on. To put the side panels back on, I start the three screws along the bottom, I struggle with the washer for far too long. 
And then I can rest the panel on these screws and fix the top three. Okay, so we're at the stage now where the next step is to install the fence and fence adjustment mechanism. Uh, but before I do that, I want to take a moment to prepare and protect all the cast iron surfaces. So I'll be using this silver glide, which I think translates to silver sliding, um, or silver glide, funnily enough, uh, to get all of these nice and protected against any rust. So first things first, I'll have to wipe away all this oil and get started. Silberglite is described on the packaging as a dry lubricant for woodworking machines, so perfect for this application. It is applied, probably not as liberally as this, and massaged into the cast iron. I then wipe away any excess and use these retired kangaroo pyjamas to give it all a final buff. And with that all done, you can see how nicely this timber offcut slides now. I should add the cast iron on these infeed and outfeed tables is wonderful. There are no burrs or rough spots, it is just one solid smooth piece. I'll go around all the other cast iron surfaces and then remove this warning for the first peek at that awesome helical cutter head and then wipe away the excess oil so it doesn't spray all over the infeed table when I start it up. I give the same treatment to the fence before installing the fence adjustment mechanism. This heavy cast iron piece attaches with these two 8mm hex bolts that need to be tightened as much as possible to keep that fence nice and sturdy. I'll then remove these two 6mm hex bolts on the front and attach the fence. Now it's worth noting that the fence is a solid piece of cast iron and weighs a bit. So planning ahead and adjusting the angle before getting it to the jointer makes life a lot easier when you're trying to balance it and screw it in place at the same time. Again you want these screws nice and firm so it only moves when you want it to. Now I'll quickly install the belt guard with these two sets of bolts into the main body. Okay, so we've reached the point now where we need to set up our joiner to make sure that it's nice and accurate when it's time to use it. First thing I'll do is set the outfeed table height to make sure it's in line with the cutter head. This should be level with the top of the arch of the cutter head. Ideally, you'd use a trusted straight edge for this. I'm going to use this trusted 6 inch steel rule held upright with a pair of nips. And I'll just tap the table down until it just barely grazes the cutter head. In fact, you should just about be able to hear the graze rather than see any movement in that straight edge at all. I'll then lock that height in place and do the same movement with the cutter head in three positions across the table. This is checking that the whole table is coplanar with the cutter head, and in this case the front side nearest to me is marginally higher and doesn't touch the straight edge when you rotate the cutter head. So to adjust this you remove these grub screws at each of the table adjustments, and then under that is another grub screw that you just loosen. Then you just take a punch and a hammer and adjust in tiny increments until that straight edge interacts with the cutter head the same way all the way along. Now in my opinion it's worth taking as long as you need to to get this set up perfectly because once it's done properly you shouldn't have to do it again. I'll do the same with the infeed table and once completed you can see that when I turn the cutter head it moves this piece of scrap wood the same amount all the way along. I'll attach the guard using an allen key to turn the flat face towards the retaining screw and then increase the tension as I need. And then testing the spring back with a little knock knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange you glad you're considering subscribing to the channel for more comedy gold like this. 
Now, this bracket wasn't on any of the exploded diagrams or anywhere in the manual, and to be honest, I was just about to bin it. But then I remembered this picture from the website when I bought it with these little paddles neatly tucked away on the side of the unit. So I'll screw that in place, or at least try to. One of the screws stripped straight away, the other was fine, and then the other started spinning the rivet. I wasn't too bothered because it doesn't really have any effect on the use of the machine, and the bracket held the paddles anyway. I made do, put the paddles in place, and it was time to inspect my work and take it for a test drive. Now the finish from the helical cutter head was incredible. It was also extremely quiet and delivered a perfect square edge. I really couldn't be happier with this unit. Well there you have it, a completely set up and tuned jointer ready to mill some timber. Uh, I have some furniture to rearrange and some bits of timber to play with. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, take it easy.